Hi there booktube, it's Eleanor here and today I'm going to do uh, the, the mid-year book freakout tag. Uh, this is where we sort of take account of the books that we've read so far in the year, take a little bit of look at uh, sort of the future of what we want to be reading and uh, just talk about some of our favourite books which is obviously my favourite thing to do. So let's dive into the questions. Okay so the first question is to talk about your favourite book so far of 2020. If you know me, you'll know that that's really difficult. I just, I can never narrow anything down to one. So what I've done is I've narrowed it down to one in four different categories. So you've got four books here. Um, so my favourite book in the romance category so far this year has been Eleanor and Grey by Brittany C. Cherry. This is quite a recent read for me actually and I just adored it. I really liked the depth that the characters brought to it. I thought the story was just really well done. It's, um, it's got really romantic elements, it's got that angst, it's got that build up of a relationship. It spans quite a long time. You find the characters when they're younger and then you skip to the future where they're not together and things have changed and um, their lives have um, changed very dramatically. And what I liked is that's, that the sort of the healing power of love was there, but it wasn't, the message there wasn't, well, when you find love, everything else goes out the window and everything's much better and, you know, the birds are singing again. It was, um, it was that love is there, love is unconditional, but love can be a struggle and it's something to work on. And there's other people who need to be taken into consideration as well. And it's very selfish to um to to just streamline your love and not include those other people who are affected by your relationship so um this was brilliant so that was my favorite romance so far this year my favourite non-fiction so far this year has been a book that I was planning on reading anyway but I read because of the booktube prize and that is Know My Name by Chanel Miller. I thought this book was really brilliant. I thought Chanel Miller tackled this subject that is her life in such a powerful and poignant way. She really reflected on what had happened to her and she really managed to convey to the reader how this event has completely changed her life and will always be a part of her life and I like the fact that she's reclaiming um, her name, reclaiming herself and um, sharing her story because I think so often we forget that um, you know people that go through these traumatic events they don't finish for them psychologically, physically, emotionally when the court case finishes there this is something that they have to battle with and um i thought she did a, a really wonderful job of showing just how much this changed her life and um changed the course of her future in all ways and how it affected the people around her and really sort of how the system works because um i've never been um a victim of um sexual abuse and uh, or, or rape and so and I'm, I don't live in America either so it was really interesting to see um, how the process worked um, how dehumanizing it is for the person who's been raped um, in hospital and how um, how traumatic that must be so I just thought this was a really brilliant powerful book and then the other book that I wanted to talk about is my favourite YA so far of this year and that is Michigan versus the Boys by Carrie S. Um, Allen. All these books I'm talking about they're my favourites I've been five star reads and uh, this one I just thought was really um, great. It's about our main character Michigan and she's been part of the school's ice hockey team and uh, the female ice hockey team and she's looking at colleges she loves the game she wants to play um, she trains so hard and at the beginning of her senior year she's told that they are no longer going to be running um, the girls ice hockey team it's too expensive and so um, her teammates look at different avenues and Michigan doesn't want to she wants to play she's trying to think what she can do and she realizes that there's no reason why she can't try out for the boys um, ice hockey team and so she does and we're following that. We're following um, her 
it's not a spoiler to say her getting on the team and uh, we look at hazing and um, abuse and sexism and really um, the strength of Michigan's character and how this all plays out and friendships and how they play a role. Um, there's been two books actually recently uh, or a book and this one that I've read this year where we're looking at friendships amongst um, athletes and, and sports people and their teammates and I think it's been really good both books have shown that um because so often we see in, in in some books you know someone leaves a team or the team disbands uh, or they're kicked off the team or something happens and then none of the team liked them anymore because they really hated them and they'd really been jealous and they wanted their place on the team and oh we weren't friends in the first place and they're all backstabbing each other and I just think you know that's not always the case and I think it's really important to see the other side where teammates that you have formed friendships and relationships from from your joint and dual love of a sport um how those friendships can have moved past just the sport itself and are actual real true friendships so that even if that sport isn't there to bring you together there's still a friendship there and there's still people supporting each other um, and this book did that really well so um thumbs up for that one and then the other one I haven't actually got a copy of but my favorite SFF book this year so far has been Come Tumbling Down uh, by Shauna Maguire I just love this Wayward Children series. They're sort of um, bite-sized treats. I love the um, different characters we're following. And um, a, a Come Tumbling Down was another example of how Shauna Maguire can just um, do no wrong in my book. So this is the fifth book in the series and we're following the thread that started in the first book, Every Heart is a Doorway, continued again in Down Among the Sticks and Bones and then is now this thread of Jack and Jill has now come back into this one as well. And I, I love how she's sort of interwoven this story and I love the, um, the Moors and this particular world out of all of them. I think this is my favourite and Jack and Jill as characters I just found um, really incredible. Um, this, these books tackle all sorts of different diversity and oh, they're just brilliant. I love um, how the start of this journey we've had with these two characters, Jack and Jill, who are twins, um, although their parents sort of forced them into these gender specific roles and, and, and pushed them in certain ways and how they rebelled against that and then there's vampires and there's mad scientists and oh and and there's um oh there's just so much in these that I absolutely adore so um I definitely recommend that one and that's been one of my favorites this year so far okay so the next question is your favorite sequel well having a look through I haven't really got a sequel to tell you about I haven't given a five stars to a sequel this year however I have given a four stars to a book series that I definitely think is a five star series as a whole so I wanted to talk about it I mean you will have heard about it I'm sure um, but that is the Heartstopper series by Alice Oseman um, I have a lot of time for Alice Oseman's work I think she's a really um, brilliant writer and um, although some of her novels have been uh, better than others for me this has been just a true joy to read um, it just it makes me smile it makes me happy and this year I read um, the third instalment and although I gave this one four stars I didn't feel it was quite so strong for me as one and two I really did enjoy it um, we're following the boys going on a, um, a school trip uh, together and sort of the starting of a more intimate relationship, more sexual relationship. Um, but as always, I just love um, these two boys and their friendship group and um, the journey that they're going on together. So if you didn't know, and you've been living under a rock, <laughs> these boys, um, th these books are about two boys and uh, one of them is out as being gay and the other is, um, not sure of his sexuality and starts to question it and there's a relationship that forms between the two and it's just beautiful and such a well done um book series the artwork as always um just draws you in it, there's very few graphic novels that i will read well i will read but will enjoy and as much as these that are in black and white and that's a true testament to how much um Alice Oseman can evoke on the page for the reader so these ones have definitely been or this one has been my favourite sequel third book in the series okay the next question is talking about new releases that you want to read 
I have quite a few of those, um, so I shall show you them now. Okay, all of these books came out in 2020, whether they're like the newest releases or not, um, but they came out in 2020. They're all books that I really want to read. Um, so first is um, Hood Feminism, Notes from the Women, White Feminists Forgot by Mickey Kendall. This book was one that was recommended by Ash at Book Bookish Realm and she read this recently and was talking about how good it was. Um, so it's definitely one that I've picked up on recommendation from her. Um, I'll link her down below. If you don't already subscribe, you should go over and subscribe. She has a great channel. She's got a gorgeous uh, baby that she includes in her vlogs, which I just love. It has made me a little bit broody, I have to admit. Um, um, and she's just uh, very articulate, very interesting, and um, she is a black booktuber, which I think it's important to point out because I feel like we should be raising um, raising up black booktubers. Black Lives Matter. Um, I've spoken about the books that I'm reading to try and educate myself, but there's always links down below where you can go and help and support. Um, this isn't like a monthly readathon. This is a long marathon that we need to continue to work towards and continue to be promoting and lifting up and educating educating ourselves especially people like me who are white um, white privileged people um, so this is another book that I want to read uh, partly because of that partly because um, Ashley has said how good it was and um, it just is one that definitely um, piques my fancy especially with the feminism aspect as well so it says inside here that all too often the focus of mainstream feminism is not on basic survival for the many but on increasing privilege for the few. Meeting basic needs is a feminist issue. Food insecurity, the living wage and access to education are feminist issues. The fight against racism, ableism and trans misogyny are feminist issues. White feminists often see, fail to see how race, class, sexual orientation and disability intersect with gender. How can feminists stand in solidarity as a movement when there is a distinct likelihood that some women are oppressing others? Insightful, incendiary and ultimately hopeful, hood feminism is both an irrefutable indictment of a movement in flux and clear-eyed assessment of how to save it. Um, so this is definitely one um, that I'm looking forward to reading. Um, another new release which is on a totally different um, vein is Reborn Yesterday by Tessa Bailey. I've heard about this on quite a few channels. I think it may have been Whitty at Whitty Novels, uh, Whitty, Whitney at Whitty Novels, um, who I saw reading this and I just thought, yes please, I'll have me some of that. Um, it's a vampire story which normally would be a turn off for me. I feel like I've sort of done my vampire thing and I haven't ever really come back to it. Um, but she, um, she raved about this one so much and it seems to be getting quite a lot of buzz and interest that I definitely thought, mm, you know, I'm loving my romance right now. This is one that I need to read. So we have our main character who is a funeral director and she's working um, on this dead body of this handsome young man when he opens his eyes and sits up and there is a bit of a flutter in her chest and she feels a bit uh something something and um and then before he can sort of wipe her mind because humans are meant to know vampires exist she reveals something that can sort of change the world as always changing the world um but sort of a human vampire romance so yes please recent juno dawson books have really really um got under my skin and i've loved them uh, meat market and clean are two of um, my favorite books by juno and so i had to pick up the latest one which is wonderland and uh, i love the cover of this i'll read you the blurb for this it's very wonderland-esque um alice Dodgson lives in a world of stifling privilege and high-end luxury, but none of it means anything when her own head plays tricks on her reality. When her troubled friend Bunny goes missing, Alice becomes obsessed with finding her and discovers a mysterious invitation to Wonderland, the elite party to end all parties. But will she find Bunny there, or is it really a case of finding herself? Because Alice has secrets of her own, and now she has a new enemy who wants her head. It says here that it's addictive and darkly glamorous, is a searing exploration of mental health, gender and privilege. Um, so those are three things that I definitely want to um, read about and I love Juno's writing. And the next one is Saving Missy by Beth Mori. Um, this was one that I was very kindly sent um, in the book swap that I do with Janet um, from Swirly Girly Reads and I just think this sounds really good. So Missy is living alone, she's lost touch or family have died, she's completely isolated, she feels like it's only what she deserves, there's obviously something she's done, she feels like she deserves this and then she has this chance encounter one day with two other women in a park. 
One thing I love about this is that um, our main character is 79 years old and so it's coming to terms with sort of the end, um, end journey of your life and what your life has become and the choices that you've made and um, it says on here it's been uh, blurbed as a bittersweet, tender, thoughtful and uplifting so I'm looking forward to reading this one. The next question is a book that disappointed you. So I don't, if I'm not enjoying a book I often will just stop it and DNF so I don't feel like I can talk about those because I haven't experienced the whole journey of the book and um, but one book I did read all the way through and unfortunately only gave two stars was This Is Our Pact by Ryan Andrews. It's a graphic novel and I had so much anticipation and hope for it I haven't actually got it anymore I've passed it on I'll try and put a picture of the cover here um, but it was a book that in essence I just thought was going to be right up my street it was about a group of boys every year they um, rode their bikes as fast as they could following this sort of lantern parade where lanterns were put on their river and and float down until they sort of disappear and the boys always say they're going to go as far as the lanterns go and and cycle as fast as they can they never go past this bridge at this sort of end of town because they all get too scared and sort of turn back and then one day um at one time one of the boys carries on as does sort of one of the boys that's a bit sort of shunned in the group and that always sort of follows them um and then i thought this is going to be really great maybe a bit creepy maybe a bit um sort of mystical and it just really fell flat for me it didn't make much sense I didn't like where it went I think I totally missed the themes and plot and ideas in this one so it was a bit of a disappointment and so that was probably my biggest disappointment so far this year okay so the next one is the biggest surprise and I would say <sighs> surprises I haven't read many books that have been like you know wow that was a great twist um, but in terms of books that have surprised me and I've read them I picked up a set of books called Palm Beach South books and I picked these up because of Peace Love books and I know she'd um, talked about them before said how good they were and I thought oh, I'll give them a go and these were just like chocolate cake books they were just gobble up um, they were just so much fun. They are multiple per, uh, POVs and it's set at a college uh, in America, Palm Beach South College or University and it's about a sorority, group of girls in a sorority. It's about all their um, escapades and love lives and um, it was like reading episodes of Greek. I don't know if anybody else ever watched that TV series but I loved it. I loved Greek. I watched all of it. I was just hooked um, and these are just so much fun they're quite steamy in places they've got great relationships um, it was just yeah these sort of um, teens and early 20s like navigating their lives and um, it's just quite nostalgic of my time at university although it was very different because UK universities aren't the same as college we don't have sororities um, but it was so good and they were really surprising because I was expecting them to be a bit like ugh but actually they're ones that I've talked about a few, a few times now and I've recommended to friends and I've enjoyed more than I expected so that was a surprise. I think someone who is well on their way to being my favourite new author is Brittany C. Cherry. Um, I've read a few books uh, by her now, I am absolutely loving them. Um, if you didn't know Brittany C. Cherry is a person of colour, she's a black author, she writes amazing romance books, I've loved all of them um, that I've read so far. I've bought some more to read. I am gobbling these up. Um, I read Eleanor and Grey and then some side characters in this. Um, Grey's uh, best friend Landon and Eleanor's cousin Shay. There is sort of background um, talk about them in this but I have since read their books. There's part one and part two of their story. They were both four stars, really strong reads. Um, I really love how her characters believe in this sort of unconditional love and it just really plays out and they're really um, clever plots and um, yeah I thought they were brilliant. The next question is your fictional crush. I don't really do fictional crushes. Um, yeah it's just I, I don't really do a fictional crush. I enjoy, I enjoy the person that I'm with at the time. <laughs> But I enjoy um, reading about lots of different people. There hasn't been anyone that's um, swoon worthy enough this year. Uh, next question is favourite character. Um, in this, it's definitely um, Eleanor and Shay. I've got two. Um, Eleanor from the story Eleanor and Grey by Brittany C. Cherry and Shay um, from Landon and Shay. Um, the male characters in this are good too, but these two female characters just really evoke what it is to show unconditional support and love to other people in their life and... 
no matter what they're going through they're strong and powerful women who stand up for the people in their lives and fight for love and fight for their families and I just I, I love that about them I just think they're brilliant characters the next is a book that's made you happy um, for that I'm going to pick this one which is Nadia Hussein's Finding My Voice now it's this is non-fiction it's Nadia talking about her life um, in, in different chapters um, she talks about a different part of her life so being a mother being um, a granddaughter being a wife Wife, being um, a daughter-in-law, being a granddaughter, being a sister, and um, being a celebrity, or, or being, you know, a, a someone well known in the public eye. And although um, there is some darker parts of her story, she talks about um, her struggle with mental health. Um, I just thought this was one of those books it made me happy it made me happy to read about where she is now and her journey and the love and um support and sort of her relationships with her family and and how that made her who she is i i smile when i watch her tv programs and the her her cooking shows have got me through the very first part of lockdown um, I gobbled them up I made from her recipe books and they made me smile they made my family happy um, and she makes you smile she's just it's just like being in a kitchen with a best friend or someone really nurturing like a mother and um, I just thought this book was brilliant it made me really happy to read about her successes and um, yeah this one just really made me happy the next one is a the most beautiful book you've bought or got this year I had a look around my shelves and I didn't really have all that many um, sort of beautiful books but this one definitely stands out and it's The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern Erin Morgenstern wrote The Night Circus which I liked I didn't love like everybody else but this book I'm hoping will be in the love category and um, I just think it's a beautiful book it's got a beautiful spine it's got this sort of gold on the front it's got beautiful um, end papers it's this sort of dark mysterious colour um, and the back is equally oh, my fingers got equally as pretty so this is definitely probably well this is definitely the most beautiful book on my shelf at the moment I can't tell you much about this because I haven't read it yet but I should be reading it well I am going to be starting it at least this weekend as part of the queer blackathon which is being hosted by a number of booktubers um, I will link down the announcement video about that down below and um, I'll link up here somewhere um, my TBR for that but this um, yeah the most beautiful one on my shelf right I'm going to whiz through this last question which is um, books you need to read right now um, so here we go Forbidden Promises by uh, Sinethia Williams this is a mass market paperback which I'm not so keen on but I've heard the story's great so I'm going to give it a chance this is a story about um, a woman who is going back to visit family she gets uh, asked to help her brother with his political campaign she doesn't feel she can turn him down but she has been chasing and running away from her sister's ex-husband um, for a long time because I think they shared a kiss so this is going to be quite an interesting one and um, quite a taboo subject your sister's ex-husband you know but I've heard that there is stuff in there which makes it palatable or makes it but I don't know but I've heard it's great, so must read this one. Uh, next one in, on my list is Along for the Ride by Mimi Grace. This was recommended to me on Amazon when I was looking at other books. Um, I love the fact that it has a person of colour on the front cover, which I think is brilliant. Um, and this is about Jolene Baxter offering to help her sister and brother-in-law move across the country. Um, and then she ends up having to take the journey with the one person she can't stand. Um, so this is sort of a hate to lovers, I believe and um, it just looks really fun it's a bit of a road trip it's a moving story and um, I'm sure there's going to be plenty of banter along the way some sci-fi that I'm looking forward to read is the second book in Brandon Sanderson's um, uh, stories uh, the first one was Skyward and this is Starsight I've had it for too long I need to read it um, this is about a young girl who wants to be a fighter pilot um, so they live on this planet where they are battling against um, constant invasion from aliens and she wants to be part of this resistance to help that she wants to train and um, there's certain things that sort of stand in her way in the first book which you find out about to do with her family and uh, various other things um, and where this first book ended I can't believe I haven't picked this up yet because 
this needs to be read and find out what happens next. The next one is How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibram X. Kendi. This is a non-fiction book that I want to get to talking um, and giving sort of ideas on how to be an anti-racist. Um, this is an important book, Black Lives Matter, as I've mentioned before in the video, and I want to learn more about how to be anti-racist because it's not enough just to say that you're, um, you're not racist, you need to be anti-racist, you need to be making those steps and making those commitments and making those choices um, on an everyday basis and you need to be fighting that all the time so um, this is something that I'm looking forward to reading and educating myself with. I said when I talked about um, my Black Lives Matter TBR the books that I wanted to read the books that were most prevalent I mean obviously I want to be reading books by black authors and not just their sort of trauma stories and stories about things um, that have happened to them um, and things that they're having to, to shout about to fight to sort of pump into everyone's heads um that their lives matter and and to sort of retell or, or to tell their history um i also want to read books by um black people just stories romance fiction and i have lots on that on my shelf but i also wanted to delve a little bit into britain because there isn't as many books i don't feel on britain and black lives and one of the ones that i was recommended was kill the black one first a memoir by michael fuller Michael Fuller was the first ever um, black super chief constable. He was born uh, to Windrush generation immigrant, uh, Jamaican immigrants in 1959 um, and he talks about his time in policing and um, and his life. What, what was interesting um, actually was that you know I've started conversations with people in my family, I've been talking to my grandma every day on um, YouTube and we had a very interesting conversation um, recently because um, she remembers um, the Windrush um, generation of people coming over um, there was uh, people living in her street my mum's best friend um, was a black girl who'd come over um, and was living opposite and um, it was just interesting to start those conversations and to find out more about um, you know how other generations have um, have learned and how, how it was for other generations so um, this is uh, one that definitely needs to be read. Okay, some romance. This book needs to be read because it's the last in this series and I've read the rest and my daughter got me for Christmas because she thought the men looked nice. Um, and that is Wicked Sexy Liar by Christina Lauren. I've read all the others about all the other um, relationships and now I need to get to this one. This is the final one. Um, this one is following London. So she's sort of a little addition to the group who were in the others. Um, the others were um, a group of girls who'd gone to Vegas and ended up getting all getting married um, in a drunken night to these um, friends, these boys, uh, men that were friends and that we followed their individual stories after their sort of marriage annulments etc. And uh, this one is about London and she is one of their friends so I can't wait to read this one. Uh, then I've got um to Hate Adam Connor by um, Ella Mays. I read To Hate Jason Thorne, which I absolutely loved. It was one of my five star reads of the year. And so this one is um, another one in the series. And I believe this is about the man that moves next door to the people in the first series. Yeah, and, um, and I think it might be about the female character's best friend. Uh, so interesting. I loved the romance and the, and the sort of sauciness in the other one. So I'm looking forward to this one. Uh, another romance, uh, The Hardest to Fall by Ella Mays. Another Ella Mays because I'm really enjoying her books and her writing. Um, this one is about um, Dylan Reed uh, and our main character who meet each other. There's something it's to do with the NFL. Oh, he was the star wide receiver of the football team, one of the few players expected to make it to the NFL. Um, and uh, oh, it's I think it's set in college. And um, yeah, I'm interested to see this one. It looks different. Um, it says, I might have also propositioned him, run away from him, attacked him with a cooking utensil, and uh, maybe I should tell you all of it. It's pretty normal stuff, things you expect from me. Eventually the time came when I couldn't hide anything, not that he'd have let me even if I tried. So, ooh, I can't wait for that one. And then the final one I want to talk about is Black Girls Must Die Exhausted, a novel for grown-ups by Jane Allen. I think this was definitely on, um, on my list of front covers that I adore. I just love this vibrant punch of... Of, um, flowers and then we've got the girl in the background sort of hidden I just think this looks brilliant the um, title is great um, so I just can't wait to get stuck into this one so I'll read you the back of this because it will probably explain it much better than I can it's 
says, Black girls must die exhausted is something that 33-year-old Tabitha Walker has heard her grandmother say before. Of course, her grandmother, who happens to be white, was referring to the 1950s and what she observed in the nascent times of civil rights. With a coveted position as a local news reporter, Mark, a paper-perfect boyfriend, and a standing Saturday morning appointment with a reliable hairstylist, Tabitha never imagined how this phrase could apply to her as a black girl in contemporary times until everything changed. An unexpected doctor's diagnosis awakens Tabitha to an unperceived culprit, threatening the one thing that's always mattered most, having a family of her own. With the help of her best friend, the irreverent and headstrong Lalia and Alexis, the former sexy Lexi, Tabitha must explore the reaches of modern medicine and test the limits of her relationships to beat the ticking clock on her dreams of becoming a wife and mother. This looks great. Okay, so there's a question here talking about the books that you are most anticipating towards the end of the year. Um, so I wanted to talk about those at the end. These are the books that aren't coming out that I've got on pre-order that I can't wait. Um, sorry, they're not aren't coming out, they haven't come out yet that I have on pre-order and I can't wait to read them. Um, I'm not going to um, tell you too much about them. I think um, you should check them out, but I will tell you a few words on what they're about. So the first one is The Black Kid. This is by Christina Hammonds Reed, and this says it's perfect for fans of The Hate You Give. Um, it explores coming in of age, debut novel, exploring issues of race, class, and violence through the eyes of a wealthy black teenager whose family get caught in the vortex of the 1992 Rodney King riots. Uh, next, Smash It. This is by our very own booktubes Francina Simone and I think this is her debut novel and I can't wait. It just, the cover is beautiful. This is an own voices book. It's about a girl who says she's a bit of a hot mess. She wants to smash junior year so she makes a fuck it list. Um, she wants to be bold, she wants to do things that scare her, learn to take a compliment, stand, stand out instead of back and now she's got a part in her school's musical production of Othello, New Her Friends and the attention of three very different boys um, so I'm looking forward to that one very much that sounds like it's going to be great fun okay another book by a booktuber that I love and this is Boy Queen George Lester's book is about a boy whose friends are preparing to head off for university he's looking at a pile of rejection letters from drama schools around the country and faces a future not really knowing what he's going to do he's just scrabbling around to try and find his feet and then suddenly realizes that perhaps he should go down the drag queen route. Um, it says, with a mother who won't stop talking, a boyfriend who won't acknowledge him, and a best friend who's dying to cover him in glitter makeup, there's only one thing for him to do, bring it to the runway. It's a debut from George, and it's full of big hair, big heels, and bigger hearts. Just tick, 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 tick. So I can't wait to read that one. Uh, the next one is a fantasy novel and it's called Kinda Poison. This is by Natalie May and it's been tipped for fans of Holly Black. It's a fantasy adventure following a teenage girl who's chosen to be the human sacrifice in a deadly game between three heirs. Um, anything to do with games I just think is brilliant. Um, and then this is about Zaru who has dreamed of leaving the kingdom of Orkenna and having the kinds of adventures she's only ever heard about in stories. But as a lowly whisperer, her power to commune with animals means that her place is served in the royal stables until the day her magic runs dry. All that changes when the ailing ruler invokes the crossing, a death-defying race across the desert in which the first of his heirs to finish and take the life of a human sacrifice at their journey's end will ascend to the throne and be granted unparalleled abilities. Sounds very life and death. Not sure I'd want to be the main sacrifice, but you know, <laughs> I think she's probably going to come out okay. Fingers crossed, because this is the first in the series. Next is If I Had Your Face. This book by Frances Cha is set in a contemporary Seoul, Korea, and it's about four young women making their way um, in the world defined by impossible high standards of beauty, secret room salons, catering to wealthy men, strict hierarchies, and K-pop fan mania. Uh, next is Cinderella is Dead. This is by Kaylin Bayron and it's 200 years after Cinderella found her prince but the fairy tale is over. Teen girls are now required to appear at the annual ball where the men of the kingdom select wives based on the girls display of finery. If a suitable match is not found and the girls not chosen, oh the girls not chosen are never heard from again, 16 year old Sophia would much rather marry Erin her childhood best friend than parade in front of su suitors. Um, this just sounds brilliant. I love books that follow on from fairy tales and this sounds much darker much more relevant brilliant next i'm interested in reading parachutes by kelly yang 
This is, um, it says, Speak enters the world of Gossip Girl in this modern immigrant story from New York Times bestseller Kelly Yang about two girls navigating wealth, power, friendship and trauma. They're called parachutes, teenagers dropped off to live in private homes and study the US while their wealthy parents remain in Asia. Claire Wang never thought she'd become one of them until her parents pluck her from her privileged life in Shanghai and enroll her in a high school in California. That just sounds like it's going to be um, really interesting. And this idea of displacement and being moved from somewhere where you sort of you know where you're at, um, I think sounds like a brilliant um, idea. And then the final one um, is Loveless by Alice Oseman. I've talked about Alice Oseman when I talked about Heartstopper and she's got a new novel coming out. This is her fourth novel and it's, um, it says it was all sinking in. I'd never had a crush on anybody. No boys, no girls, not a single person I'd ever met. What did that mean? Georgia has never been in love, never kissed anyone, never even had a crush. But as a fanfic obsessed romantic, she's sure she'll find her person one day. As she starts university with her best friends Pip and Jason in a whole new world far away from home, Georgia's ready to find romance and with her outgoing roommates, on her side and a place in the Shakespeare Society, her teenage dream is in sight. But when her romance plans wreak havoc among her friends, Georgia ends up in her own comedy of errors and she starts to question why love seems so easy for other people, but not for her. It says with new terms thrown at her, asexual, aromantic, Georgia is more uncertain about her feelings than ever. Is she destined to remain loveless? Um, I just think this sounds like a really interesting book. Alice Oseman is very um, current and, uh, um, really um, understands what she's talking about and I just love her books so I'm really looking forward to that one. Anyway that is it from me and I look forward to speaking to you soon. What are you looking forward to? Put in the comments below. Tell me what you're looking forward to reading um, next in the year. Have you got anything on pre-order? Maybe I should add that as well. Let me know. Um, but this is it from me and I'll speak to you soon. Bye for now booktube.